In this video, we're going to be finding volumes of solids of revolution where these solids have holes or gaps in them. Okay, so these two diagrams go together and these two diagrams go together. Okay, for this diagram that I've had to recreate because it was wiped out of my Word document, you can see that there's a rectangle, you have an axis of revolution, and what we're going to do is we're going to take this rectangle and we're going to revolve it around this axis of revolution. So what we need to be mindful of are um, two radii. Okay, when you have the rectangle and it's not completely touching the axis of revolution, when you rotate it, you're going to have this gap here. Okay, and that gap's going to create this hole of this solid. Okay, so in the previous method of disks, remember the rectangle always touched the axis of revolution, so when you rotate it, there was no gap um, between the axis of revolution and the rectangle. All right, so when we have this situation where we have a rectangle that's not touching the axis of revolution, we want to consider two radii. So looking at the relationship of the axis of revolution and the rectangle, I'm going to line myself up vertically underneath, in this case, vertically underneath this rectangle. Maybe I'm standing here. And as I look towards the rectangle, okay, when I intersect it first, we're going to call this distance right here the inner radius. So, and when you look at the picture over here, it corresponds to the radius of the hole. Okay, so, and then when I put myself back on the axis of revolution and I look towards the rectangle and I continue until I get to the top of the rectangle or the furthest away on the rectangle, okay, we're going to call this the outer radius. So that's why we use an uppercase R and a lowercase r. When you look over here at this diagram, you can see that the outer radius would be the radius of uh, the solid and the hole combined. So I'm um, just looking at the relationship between this rectangle and what it does over here on this, um, this washer, if you will, this disc with a hole in it called a washer. Okay, when well, these two right here, same situation, uh, we put a little more description though uh, to our rectangle. Um, this rectangle is um, representative in this bounded region right here. Okay, so we're considering the region from x equals a to x equals b. Uh, we have this uh, random rectangle, representative rectangle. Here's our axis of revolution down here. And so we're going to rotate this region around this axis of revolution. So line yourself up vertically underneath the rectangle on the axis of revolution. Look towards the rectangle. Okay. The closest distance from the axis of revolution to the rectangle is going to be called your inner radius. So if you look at it over here, okay, you're going to see that that's the radius of this hole in this solid. So this is the inner R right here, the lowercase r. Okay, standing back on the axis of revolution looking towards the rectangle, the furthest away I can get on the rectangle would be up here. So that distance, vertically speaking, is going to be our, our, our outer radius, capital R. So looking over here, you can see the bounded region that sweeps out this revolution, or this solid here. Okay, So this outer radius is going to be the radius of the solid and the radius of the whole combined. So it's with that in mind that we're going to build our formulas for um, washers that we're going to use to solve washer problems. All right, so the volumes of these solids, we'll put some words to what we're going to be doing. So the volume of the solid is going to be the volume with the filled in hole minus the volume of the hole. Okay, and so down here we'll put the notation that's going to give us the volume of the solid that has the hole in it. Okay, so volume equals, so when we look at just this right here with the filled in hole, that's just a disk method. So if you remember, the disk method is pi times the integral, a to b, outer radius, or it's the only radius we had actually with the disks because there was no gaps, dx minus, now we need an integral that represents the volume of the hole. Okay, so if you look at either diagram, I'm going to look at this one right here, it's just another disk. So we have two disks and we're going to be subtracting. So minus pi 
times the integral from A to B. Okay, well the volume of the hole is going to be found using the inner radius. We're going to square it and we get dx. And this is fine. You can use this formula, but you might notice that with some properties of integrals that we can kind of clean this up and collapse it into one integral. Because we have the same limits, same constant multiplier of pi. Okay, we're differentiating with respect to x. Okay, we can collapse this to one integral. It's the outer radius squared minus the inner radius squared. And this right here identifies that we're going to be using the washer method because we have an outer radius and an inner radius. Okay, this is one formula right here that we could uh, be using. A second one that we could be using is instead of rotating around a, a horizontal axis of revolution, if we rotated around a vertical axis of revolution, then we're differentiate or integrating with respect to y. So let's customize for that situation. So here's the other formula in case we're integrating with respect to y. Remember our limits are now y limits as opposed to x limits and we use the letters c and d. Outer radius squared, which gives us the radius of the solid and the whole, minus the inner radius squared, which is just the radius of the whole, with respect to y. So in here, we would need to fill in outer radius in terms of y, inner radius in terms of y. So these are the two formulas that we're going to be using in the examples and the problems that we um, encounter. All right, let's take note of this note down here. With the washer method, the rectangle does not touch the axis of revolution. Well, let me just say this. There might be a piece of the rectangle that touches the axis of revolution, but if the entire rectangle does not touch the axis of revolution, then we are committed to using the washer method. There's going to be a gap. Okay, also note that the rectangle is perpendicular. That should be perpendicular to the axis of revolution, just like the uh, disk method. Okay, so for our first example, let me fill in this equation here. y equals x squared plus 1, y equals negative x plus 3, yeah, axis of revolution, yeah, got it, x-axis. All right, let's take the time to draw this uh, region right here. It's an upward opening parabola, the y-intercept of 1. Then we have a linear function with a y-intercept of 3 and a slope of negative 1. So perhaps something like this. Okay, establish the axis of revolution. So unless a graph's provided, we need to produce it. Show the axis of revolution. That keeps us on track. Next thing, immediately go over here and draw in a representative rectangle. Okay, and noticing also like area that no matter where you place that representative rectangle, the top will always touch the linear function and the bottom of each of those rectangles will touch the other curve, the um, parabola. Okay, at this point what we want to do is establish our outer and inner radius because that's what we need. So I line myself up underneath the rectangle on the, x, or the axis of revolution. And I look towards the rectangle, so I'm looking up in this case. The shortest distance to the rectangle would be at the bottom of the rectangle, and we're going to call this our inner radius. So if I were to revolve this region around this axis of revolution, this is going to represent the radius of the hole. Then stand back on the axis of revolution, look towards the, the rectangle. The furthest away to the rectangle would be up here. Okay, so that distance would be called our outer radius, which is the radius of the solid of revolution, including the radius of the hole. All right, uh, to begin the setup of our integral that represents this volume, we also need to know the x-coordinates of the point of intersections. With a calculator, we know what to do. Without a calculator, set the equations equal and to solve algebraically to find these x-coordinates. To save time, I'm going to go ahead and give them to you. This point of intersection is negative 2, 5, and this point of intersection is 1, 2. So I think we have everything we need to uh, set up the integral that represents the volume of this solid. 
So um, pi, pi is always um, part of the um, formulas for volumes um, using disks and washers, um, because if you think about it, you know that those are just cylinders, and the volume in a cylinder uh, requires that we multiply by pi. All right, so we're going to look at the limits of negative two to positive one. Okay, and I think the best thing to do here is to set up two brackets where you're going to have an outer radius and an inner radius squared. It's a differentiation with or integration with respect to x, so it's dx. And maybe for your own self, put up here big R and little r. All right, so let's come over here and look with look at what big R is. What is the value that represents the outer radius. Well, I'm going to go from this curve here, the linear function, okay, to y equals 0, which is the x-axis. So I'm going to subtract okay, y equals negative x plus 3, okay, and 0. So negative x plus 3 minus 0. All right, let's get a representation in terms of x for the inner radius. Well, here's the inner radius. Okay, notice that the inner radius can be found by taking the parabola, the quadratic, and subtracting 0. So I'm subtracting these two um, equations. So this right here is y equals x squared plus 1. So x squared plus 1 minus 0. So notice in the washer method that you're taking the two functions and you're subtracting the axis of revolution. And in this case, that's y equals zero. All right, let's do a little cleanup. We're gonna to wanna to clean up whether we go to the calculator and find our answer or whether we do it by hand. All right, here. And then here. And don't forget your dx. Now, Let's just think about, okay, if I had to find this by hand without a calculator, I would square this binomial, square this binomial, distribute the negative, clean it up, probably do a reverse power rule, and then evaluate that antiderivative at these x values. And then as a final step, multiply by pi. Uh, it's not going to be difficult, it's just going to be tedious. Okay, we're going to avoid doing that, and at this point we're just going to come up with the answer from the calculator. So I encourage you to take your calculator at this point, type all of this into y1. Okay, just the way you see it. Type it into y1, go to the home screen, do the necessary keystroke, multiply by pi at the end, and see if you can confirm that that is the value of the solid. All right, notice when you turn the worksheet over that the problem on the back at the top is the same equations. The change here is the axis of revolution. So we're gonna get the same diagram except for the axis of revolution. Okay, the axis of revolution is not the x-axis anymore, but down here at this horizontal line, y equals negative one. Axis of revolution. Okay, so this uh, region is a little further away from our axis of revolution, uh, so our solid's going to be a little bit bigger. Okay, we've got the region graph, we've indicated the axis of revolution, draw in your representative rectangle. Okay, um, let's see, uh, we have the same um, points of intersection. Those are necessary for the um, limits. Okay, and this is y equals negative 1. Okay, stand on the axis of revolution for this method. Uh, washer, stand on the axis of revolution. Look towards the rectangle. Find it. There it is. The shortest distance from the axis of revolution to the rectangle, this distance would be your inner radius. Back here on the axis of revolution, looking up towards the rectangle, the furthest away I can get is would be at the, at the top of this rectangle here. So that would be our outer radius. Again, the radius of the solid, including the radius of the hole. I think we're ready for the setup. We've established that it's washers, so immediately pi times the integral, negative 2 to 1. If it's washers, because you know you're going to have a hole or a gap, go ahead and get this set up. It's integration, or yeah, integration with respect to x. 
Okay. All right, so let's come over here and get an expression in terms of x for the outer radius. Well, the outer radius, remember, goes from here to here. So to find that distance, it'd be the top minus the bottom, and in this case, it's the linear function minus the axis of revolution, negative x plus 3 minus negative 1. We'll come back and clean it up later. The inner radius is going to be the quadratic minus negative 1. Okay, and just a comparison to the problem that was on the front here, the only thing we've done is we've moved the axis of revolution a little lower, so instead of subtracting 0, we're subtracting the axis of revolution, as uh, subtracting negative 1 indicates. Do a little cleanup. And similar to the last problem, not difficult to integrate at all, um, just a little tedious with all the calculations. Oh, did I have plus? That should be minus here and minus here. Okay, but we're going to avoid all that work, and we're going to go straight to the calculator, and we're going to get 162 pi over 5. And I encourage you at this point just to check your calculator keystrokes. I would type this all into Y1, go to the home screen, do the keystrokes, multiply by pi, and you should end up with this answer right here.